Raman, we're here. Everything's been arranged. Someone will bring the village keepers back to Aru village shortly. I guess all I can say now is, thanks for agreeing to help. Ah, don't mention it. I think we can both agree you went to hell and back for it. But we share a common cause now. From here on out, we're allies. Where are the perpetrators? I'll bring you to them. Follow me. So these are the people who kidnapped the village keepers. Oh no, it's the scribe! There's no need to yell. No one can help you now. We've been all over the desert trying to find you! That's right. General Mahamatra? No, no! Make it quick, please! Swift and painless! Whoa! The moment they set eyes on Sino, they turn pale like they've seen a ghost! You should have known that I would be coming for you. Wait, we were just following orders! You know what I'm talking about, right? There's no way we could have done all this by ourselves! No, not Sino! He's gonna tear us limb from limb! I could do worse. Please have mercy! Start talking. Otherwise, I'll have to resort to... other methods. So... Your superiors have kept you quite busy recently. Why? What are they trying to accomplish? Uh, they, um, wanted to extract canned knowledge. Don't play dumb. You know what I'm really asking. They extract divine canned knowledge. Then what? I, I, I don't really don't know how to explain it. Well, you better start talking, or you'll be sorry! You don't want to make things any more difficult for yourself, do ya? Be my guest. Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. That sure didn't sound like a fancy metaphor or anything. You're serious, aren't you? How did you know? There's no use hiding it now. Yes, you're right. The Academia is working on an important and potentially world-changing project. They are creating a new god. A god that will belong to them and to the people of Sumeru. It may seem as if Sumeru's academics are thriving, but ever since the death of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, scholarly breakthroughs have been few and far between. The withering of Ermin's soul has been getting worse recently. The sages have tried everything they could think of, but nothing's worked. I'm always hearing them say things like, if only Greater Lord Ruka Devata was still with us. Continue. And then, someone from the Fatui showed up. They called him the Doctor. He brought a, a, a Gnosis, and said he wanted to borrow the Academia's research facilities. The Doctor was previously expelled from the Academia. At first, the sages looked down at him in disdain. But when he said those words, everyone's expression changed. He asked them, do you wish to create a god? This is what the arrogant ignorance at the extreme end of Academia looks like. First, the Academia spent a long time constructing a divine vessel, which was based on an exquisite humanoid puppet. After that, they harvested dreams via the Seb Zerus Festival Samsara, maximizing the Akasha's output. With the doctor's help, and the Akasha now functioning at maximum efficiency, they were able to use it to extract the power from the Gnosis and convert it into a divine core. 
Next, they decided that their new god needed to possess divine wisdom. For that to happen, they needed a huge quantity of divine canned knowledge. It adds up. But how do you determine whether the knowledge extracted is of divine origin? Call it an educated guess? The Academia has been trying to figure out the exact source of the Scholar's Madness for centuries, but to no avail. Nobody can explain the cause of this phenomenon. Uh, surely you can see what that implies, Scribe al -Haytham. If it's knowledge no mortal can comprehend, then it must be something only gods are able to decipher. In other words, it's the source of the God of Wisdom's omniscience and omnipotence. Hmm... You must have noticed by now. The Academia doesn't care about who their god is. It's the ability to exercise control over knowledge and wisdom that matters. It is as if they are cursed with a desire for omniscience and omnipotence that burns in their blood. Some organisms demonstrate phototaxis and thus orient their entire lives in respect to sources of light. For the sages, their only source of hope is the existence of a deity who embodies the acme of wisdom. This is but a form of phototaxis. For many scholars, the absence of a god of wisdom means stumbling in the darkness for the duration of their lives. Then what does Lesser Lord Kusanali mean to you? Is she not a true god present in this world? If you already have a new god, why try to create another one? From the beginning, the Academia has never treated her as a god. When the Academia first discovered Lesser Lord Kusanali, the newborn god of wisdom, the sages hoped that she would be as wise as Greater Lord Ruka Devada. But upon evaluation, they found that at the time, she possessed no more intelligence than any ordinary human child. The sages never had a ruder awakening. This forced them to accept that Greater Lord Ruka Devada had indeed passed away. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali's Gnosis had been used to power the Akasha this entire time. By herself, she has neither an Archon's raw power nor the spectacular insight expected of a god of wisdom. Slowly but surely, people began to forget about her existence. So, this is the path the sages have chosen. All right, let's try to keep our cool. If everyone's in a bad mood, then let's change up our scenery. Raman, Give me a few men to help us escort the village keepers back to the village. And these two scholars, they're coming too. Sure, as you wish. <laughs> 